here we have a Fairyland Lustre Bowl by Wedgwood by their rather famous eccentric designer Daisy Mackie Jones who produced these beautiful designs for, for Wedgwood um, from 1915 onwards and as one can see the designs are absolutely stunning they're actually one of my favourite pieces. I, I absolutely adore them. Um, the rich beauty of the colours um, make them such a precious, dainty thing to hold and to view. Um, they're almost like a rare gem, the way that uh, they, they can diffuse and break up the light. Um, and this one's uh, an absolutely gorgeous example. Daisy Mackie Jones was, they say, something of an eccentric, as can be seen very easily from her work here. Um, it's said that she she lived more in the land of, of fairies and elves and the mystical and the mythical than she did the real world. Um, but the fact is, for, for Wedgwood in the, uh, from 1915 till their discontinuation in 1929, that fanciful flair for design and imagination certainly did them very well because these luxury goods, uh, did well both on both sides of the Atlantic, both in the UK and America. Um, unfortunately for Daisy, when the world, world's economy started to um, slow down in the late twenties the um, market for her extremely expensive pieces such as this um, basically flatlined and she was incapable of change this is all she could do <laughs> the, 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 the poor dear so she was pretty much like a fish out of water and by 1931 uh, Wedgwood decide, well asked her politely if she would retire um, and uh, she left, she stormed out and never designed again so these are very much her legacy these stunningly fabulously beautiful um, pieces. This one is um, there's the model number or the pattern number sorry I should say this one is Z4825 there were numerous fairyland pattern designs um, all with their, their own unique 
designs of of elves and fairies and nymphs and dragons are very they have a very not only mystical and mythical um, appeal to them but uh, they, they're obviously influenced by the Oriental as well um, but they they are they feel precious they look precious they're the the, the depth of the the luster, the way it can diffuse lights like a prism is just uh, or not the most flattering analogy I guess but it's almost like water on oil the way uh, as you can see there in the bowl there the way the light is just diffused into a sheen of greens and reds it's uh, quite stunning in fact um, I love this bowl I have to admit I absolutely adore it um, it's in beautiful condition there is one tiny little flaw to it and that is I think it's right yeah here it is just above my thumb here there's a little hairline crack and it is tiny you can just see it um, and it runs does it run down the inside yeah it runs down the inside just a just a fraction as well I think it goes down to just under a centimeter um, it's tiny you, you you simply don't notice this. I mean, you notice it under cr close scrutiny, but um, I certainly didn't notice it until I was, you know, pretty much going over this uh, beautiful bowl with a, a, a fine tooth comb. Um, and that's it. That's the one flaw which I'm just trying to really magnify for you in this video now. Um, but uh, I, I could literally look at this bowl all day. I, I think it's quite simply stunning. It, it, it's like a precious stone. Um, and just uh, a marvel of, of Art Nouveau design and creativity. Uh, a very eccentric design I guess from a very eccentric mind a very eccentric creative mind uh, so there you have it so this bowl is dated somewhere between 1915 and 1929 and it really is um, a very beautiful example and available exclusively on the timeless-antiques.co.uk website thank you